Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to Lesson 30 from the Distinction Bound Student textbook written by Cardin Madzokir. As usual we start with homework activity 26 given in the previous lesson. Question 1. Discuss the role that the fiscal policy could play on demand pull inflation? 8 marks. Taxes have an effect on spending habits, which in turn affects price levels. An increase in personal. Income tax reduces disposable income, which may result to a reduction in demand for goods and services. This in turn will slow down the rate at which prices go up. It also works in reverse, a reduction in personal income tax increases will increase disposable income, which may result in an increase in demand for goods and services. This will result in demand pull inflation. 2. What is a Laffer curve? 2 marks. It is a curve that was created by the U.S. supply-side economist Arthur Laffer, this curve explores a relationship between tax rates and tax revenue collected by governments. 3. Explain what would happen if the tax rate was at 100%. If tax is 100% then nobody will work because all income would go to the government. Let's get into the lesson for the day in which we will look at reasons for public sector failure. Public sector failure is the public sector analogy to market failure and occurs when government intervention causes a more inefficient allocation of goods and resources than would not occur without that intervention. It is when the government fails to manage the economy and resources under its control. Key Features of Public Sector Failure Ineffectiveness Ineffectiveness is the inability to produce a desired result. When something is deemed ineffective, it means the intended or expected outcome has not been achieved. Public sector is failing when the following are prevalent. Missing targets, example regarding inflation, growth and employment. Incompetence in using monetary and fiscal policy and harmonizing them. Inefficiency. The term inefficiency generally refers to an absence of efficiency. Wasting resources, such as taxpayers' money, is an example of inefficiency. These inefficiencies may occur in relation to protection and social, economic and administrative services for which money is voted in the budget. So here are the factors that contribute to public sector failure. Cardin came up with the following sentence mnemonic to help you remember in the exam. The mnemonic says my little brother plays soccer at sundowns. The M in my stands for management failure. The L in little stands for lack of motivation. The B in brother stands for bureaucracy. The P in place stands for politicians. The S in soccer stands for structural weakness. The A in it stands for apathy. The S in sundowns stands for special interest groups. Let's start with management failure. State-owned entities are not directly accountable to the taxpayers since they are accountable to parliament. SOEs are not expected to maximize profits. They receive their budget allocations based on projected costs and needs. Personal objectives are often put before the welfare of the people. Next up is lack of motivation. Lack of incentives, in the public sector, there is limited or no profit motive. Due to the fact that workers and managers lack incentives to improve services and cut costs it can lead to inefficiency. For example, the public sector may be more prone to overstaffing. The government may be reluctant to make people redundant because of the political costs associated with unemployment. Let us move on to bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is a system of government or organization characterized by hierarchical structure, complex rules, and procedures, and often associated with slow decision-making and administrative inefficiency. Excessively complicated administrative procedures that once instituted, bureaucracies are difficult to dislodge or change. People who work for government agencies, from high-level managers and executives to clerical staff, are called bureaucrats. Bureaucrats are criticized when they become too complex, inefficient, or too inflexible. They bring to mind long, difficult forms, standing in long lines, and encounters with inflexible and unsympathetic clerks. The simplest requests are tangled in red tape, the paperwork that slows down accomplishment of an otherwise simple task. Despite this popular perception, bureaucracy is necessary for big governmental agencies to operate. All bureaucracies share similar characteristics, including specialization, hierarchical organization, and formal rules. In the best circumstances, these characteristics allow a bureaucracy to function smoothly. Here are a few examples of bureaucracy contributing to public sector failure. Delays in decision-making, bureaucratic structures can lead to slow and cumbersome decision-making processes, resulting in delays in implementing policies and addressing urgent issues. Red tape and regulations, 
excessive bureaucratic rules and regulations can create barriers for businesses and individuals, hindering economic activities and innovation. Inefficiency and waste, bureaucratic inefficiencies may result in misallocation of resources and unnecessary expenditures, leading to financial waste. Next up is politicians. Politicians are interested in vote maximizing in order to be elected or re-elected. The pursuit of self-interest amongst politicians and civil servants can often lead to a misallocation of resources. For example decisions about where to build new roads, bypasses, schools and hospitals may be decided with at least one eye to the political consequences. The pressures of a looming election or the influence exerted by special interest groups can foster an environment in which inappropriate spending and tax decisions are made. For example, boosting welfare spending in the run-up to an election, or bringing forward major items of capital spending on infrastructural projects without the projects being subjected to a full and proper cost-benefit analysis to determine the likely social costs and benefits. Critics of current government policy towards tobacco taxation and advertising and the controversial issue of genetically modified foods argue that government departments are too sensitive to political lobbying from the major corporations. Next is structural weaknesses. If a government fails to meet its objectives, a structural weakness exists. Some objectives may work against each other, e.g. government redistributes income and wealth too aggressively. The IMF Executive Board, in a report published in 2013, said the economic progress South Africa had made over the past two decades risked being undermined by structural weaknesses. These included poor public service delivery, which was affecting investor perceptions and macroeconomic outcomes. Next let's look at apathy. Apathy is lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern, often leading to disengagement from civic and economic activities. Apathy is a state of indifference, or the suppression of emotions such as concern, excitement, motivation, and or passion. An apathetic government official has no interest in delivering an efficient service to the public as long as it involves emotional, social, spiritual, philosophical, physical life and or the country. For example, an apathetic minister of finance will not spend money on social grants, helping households who lose their belongings due to natural disasters and things like that. Lastly we will look at special interest groups. Trade unions can influence the government to distribute resources in such a way that benefit them at the expense of poor households e.g., the 2013-14 Marikana strike. Here are other examples. Corporate lobbying, special interest groups representing powerful corporations may influence policymakers to create policies that favor their interests, sometimes at the expense of the broader public. Labor unions, while labor unions play an important role in protecting workers' rights, they can also push for policies that may hinder economic competitiveness and job creation. Environmental advocacy groups, environmental groups may advocate for stricter regulations, which could burden industries and stifle economic growth. Healthcare industry lobbying, pharmaceutical and healthcare industry lobbying can impact policies related to drug pricing and healthcare access, potentially leading to challenges in providing affordable health care. Agricultural subsidies, special interest groups representing agricultural industries may influence government policies to maintain subsidies, which can distort markets and hinder free trade. As usual we conclude with Activity 27. Question 1. Discuss management and accountability as a reason for public sector failure. That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.